Thank you all so much. How's it going? How are we doing, Ted? Ted women. They brought me in for a bit of comic relief. I'm so excited to be here at TED Women. You know, I, I think I speak for myself, but also for all of us. When I think I'm really inspired, you know, and personally I feel like I'm not going to stop until every person, living or dead, is a woman. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. Yeah. Uh. No, but I do hate when people say that God is a woman. Right? I hate that. I really, I think she would have done better, you know? No. Yeah. It's like, if God is a woman, she's a real guy's gal, if you know what I mean. So. I'm going to do a couple songs for you guys. Um, so this first one I wrote before lockdown, but it became especially relevant. And it's about this thing I do um, where I like somebody, I have a crush, or maybe we go on a couple dates. And instead of letting things unfold naturally, I'll sort of accidentally scroll their Instagram back until 2012. <laughs> this song's about that. <clears throat> I learned too much about you too soon because I couldn't wait. Yes, I internet stalked you. To the point that we can no longer date Cause I know your mother's name And your father's name And your sister's name And your cousin's husband's name I know that your uncle recently passed away And I'm so sorry about that, babe I know every girl that you've ever dated And the exact day you stopped being happy Your posture changed I know that you and your friends hike a lot It's too much, we'll change that I've seen every photo tagged of you on the entire internet I know you dropped out of college But your Spanish, it's polished and you own approximately five shirts The police are outside my door But I'm clutching your head all I made on the floor If they ever tell people how often other people look at their profiles I will kill myself So goodbye Lover, I stopped. Thank you. It's vulnerable. I, I feel like it's like a thing people say when conversation gets kind of boring at parties, you know, where they're like, did you hear there's an app where you can see who looks at your Instagram? It's like, that's not funny. It's not funny. It's not a cool thing to say. <laughs> I feel like there are people here who have been married for 40 years. They're like, what the hell is she talking about? Yeah, it's complicated now. It's gotten complicated. <laughs> no, I know. You don't have to be old to be married 40 years. Some people get married and they're like 20. <clears throat> Not me. Um, <laughs> I, do, I do understand why, like, baby boomers are sort of afraid now that millennials are getting older, you know, now that we're getting real jobs. I do get that, you know. It's hard to imagine a millennial in a serious job, right? Can you imagine a millennial as a doctor, you know? Like, not to be a bitch, but you have cancer. You know? Like, hands your prognosis, like, I'm really sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you a little about myself. Um, I had a pretty crazy last couple of years. So basically, I had this set come out for Comedy Central, short set, it came out April 2020. So right when we had just gotten into lockdown. And then cut to like six months later, one of the songs I did from that set went super viral on TikTok. And right, I was not on TikTok, okay, because I'm 32. So I sort of didn't know we were allowed. <laughs> but we are. And it was crazy because there's all these people lip syncing my song, but in my real life, I had just started this job working customer support for a food delivery app. So answering phone calls for customer support, the worst job I've ever had in my life. 
So it was this really weird juxtaposition because I'm having this huge career moment when I look at my phone, right? People are tweeting at me like, we love you, you're a genius. And then for eight hours a day, people are like, you're a bitch, where's my food? <laughs> and it was really interesting to experience. So I'm gonna play the song for you guys and then I'm gonna go over some of my favorite male reactions that I got on the internet afterwards. So this song, maybe you've heard it, maybe you haven't. It is um, the true story about the first American woman who they ever sent to space, whose name was Sally Ride. <laughs> Remember when NASA sent a woman to space for only six days and they gave her 100 tampons, 100 tampons. And they asked, will that be enough? Cause they didn't know if that was enough. These are our nation's greatest minds. They are literally rocket scientists. They also tied the tampons together by the strings like sausages. 100 tampons, 100 tampons. I can picture it now. Come with me. I'm Sally Ride and I'm going to space for the first time. I'm walking tall, I feel so proud. Then I see a man running panic through the crowd. He's holding a large bag. I think, what can this be? And then he hands 100 tampons to me. And then he hands 100 tampons to me for one week. They could have asked me. I would have said maybe 33. Cause even if it were my period week, I might have already brought some with me. But, you know. Thanks, I guess. 100 tampons, how does she use a tampon when they tie the strings together? 100 tampons, don't hate me. 525,600 tampons, so sorry. 525,000 tampons in space. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. So men on the internet were furious about this song. <laughs> furious. And it's funny because honestly, to be honest, out of all the feminist comedy songs that I've written, this is the absolute tamest by far. <laughs> Like, for example, me and my bandmate, Isabel Martin, we wrote a song called All Older White Men Should Die, parentheses, but not my dad. <laughs> so I really didn't think this would make them that angry. I really didn't. But they were enraged. So I wanted to show you some of my favorite genres of comments that I got. So this first one, we have what I call the honest critic. Just offering a critique. Okay, so he, so he starts... It was funny at first, but then she ruined it. Okay, all right, let's hear him out. Someone said, please elaborate. <laughs> all right, you have criticism, let's hear it. She kept yapping about the tampons, yeah. <laughs> and you know what, fair. So you know, I'm gonna take that. I mean, to be honest, the tampons is sort of a central part of the song, <laughs> but I'll take the note, you know? We'll work it going forward. This next one um, I call the microgravity expert. And this, this was an absolutely amazing phenomenon because what happened was somehow within the three to four minutes of my song, thousands of men on the internet became experts in microgravity and menstruation. 
And I think that is so impressive because normally that sort of takes years to really understand. But they got it like that. And I just think that is huge. He said, at that time, nobody had experienced having a period of microgravity. Relax. Because really, that's what they're angry about, is they're sitting at their computer like, stop laughing. It isn't funny. This next comment, this pissed me off more than anything. This type of comment, I'll just show you. Look at Bo Burnham up, if you liked. And then the person said, I did look him up, and he's really good. Thanks for the suggestion. Guys, can we focus on me? Can we please focus on me? Okay, Bo Burnham has had three Netflix specials. All right, I just quit my job at customer support. Okay, so let's, I, let's just focus on me. Okay, it's my song. Okay, thank you. So, thank you so much. This last one, um, this is what I called the essayist. And this is somebody who I'm sure they were pitching to the New York Times and the New York Times said, we're full this month. So they decided to just DM it to me directly. And I think that's great. Um, this went on for several paragraphs, I will say. Uh, does 100 tampons really seem that unreasonable considering that it's NASA? Huh? I'm male, no. I really, I thought this message was a woman. That's, wow. And I understand that you wouldn't take 100 with you on a seven day vacation, but NASA had to plan for the absolute worst case scenario. From a quick Google, I see most women use three to 10 tampons per day, 10 being an absolute disaster of a flow. An absolute disaster of a flow. Because this is what their fear was, wasn't it? The men in NASA, they're like, she's gonna get up there, it's gonna come out of her eyes and her ears and her mouth. And if we don't have 100 tampons, boys, we're in trouble. We're in real trouble up there, boys. So I wrote him back, I said, you're absolutely right, I I'll cut the song, I'll delete it right now, it doesn't make any sense. You're completely right. But in all honesty, I am really, really thankful if this song started any conversation where it might otherwise be uncomfortable about periods. That's a lot of the feedback I got and that was the most amazing thing to me, like people sending it in their Slack channels to their bosses, texting it to their dads. And I just think it's really insane, as we all know, that half the population bleeds and the other half has no idea what is going on. And I'm really grateful for that. And I know it sounds cheesy, but I often just find myself thinking that I really hope Sally would have liked it. So thank you all so much. Thank you.